Okay, so from Wiley, you got called to the Eastern States, and at some point there, you end up in Canberra. I did. And you then had some involvement with NBL, or particularly, I'm aware that you were involved with the NBL on TV. What can you tell us about that? Well, I, when I went to Canberra, I became a state coach for Canberra, and nine Australian championships I went to, from under 14 boys through to 16 girls, 18 girls, under 20 men over a number of years and then in 1979 I became a member of the board of the Canberra Cannons and uh, I, with specific responsibilities uh, for media, so radio and television and I promoted the Canberra Cannons on a weekly sports show segment and I did that for some maybe seven or eight years and then in 1982 uh, we had the first basketball show ever on Australian TV for one hour. So I was the organiser, the presenter and the host and also a, a basketball commentator. Uh, and that uh, show was called Hooked on Cannons. Welcome to the last episode of Hooked on Cannons for 1983. And here we go as the West Adelaide starting five, Leroy Loggins, Ray Wood, Peter Alley, Andy Campbell and Al Green. And the NBL final for 1983 is underway. West Adelaide in the red and black and Canberra in the light blue. It received an NBL award in 1983. Very proud of my involvement with that. Uh, and uh, uh, even though I, uh, I felt... Uh, you know, my input was good there, mm -hmm. and I felt very proud. Never would I have felt as proud of uh, basketball and teams as those under 18, under 16 yeah. girls. That, yeah. that was a highlight. I went uh, on f uh, from there, and I, uh, I coached Defence Force teams uh, for some 30 years at the uh, Defence Force Academy, and then state teams at combined defence basketball. Um, I've ceased to do that now. I, um, I am a mentor coach, so I help the coaches on a yearly basis and, and that, but only as an advisor rather than as an active coach. But I enjoyed my time tremendously uh, with that. And luckily I was elevated to the SA Defence Basketball Hall of Fame, which is quite, uh, quite uh, I'm quite pleased about. Um, then uh, uh, today I coach uh, Southern Tigers team, under 23 men, I run their under 23 program, seven teams, and coach one of those teams. Uh, I also coach Southern Tigers uh, uh, senior men as well, and enjoy doing that. It takes care of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, I, um, I'm on the board of SA Country, I represent Wales on that uh, board as well. Um, I work for the South Australian Basketball Commission uh, in history honours and awards so I'm behind the scenes there making sure people are honoured and, and awarded and uh, uh, other than that, Trev, I don't have any spare time. No, no so I'm amazed John that you can sit still because it, it seems like there must be basketballs bouncing around in your blood. Well, I'm tied to the chair, Trevor. <laughs> There's just no ability. You've made me nervous coming in here, but it really is a pleasure not not to talk about my role in basketball, but about other people's roles. And we've got much to be grateful. You know, we're custodians of this of the sport. Our time comes and our time goes, and I just feel uh, uh, I will keep working for basketball because I owe it so much. It doesn't owe me anything. I've had such an enjoyable time, met some fantastic people, and had great times in my life. Uh, I still owe basketball, not the other way around. <laughs> uh, what, what can you tell us about what are you, what's your current role in SA Country Basketball? Um, I, I'm a board member there. I look after the interests of Whale Basketball. Um, I vote on issues that uh, affect country associations. Quite often, I'm outvoted. Uh, I'm a strong believer in the promotion of grassroots basketball. 
I believe that the more effort we put in at the lower level and the more we bulk up that level of basketball, even with very inexperienced people, the greater the success at the top. I see others who think that success at the top comes in putting effort into those top people. I see the success coming, putting effort into the bottom people. And we need to be coaching more new coaches. We need to instill in them the right skills, the right attitudes and those sorts of things. Uh, so that's that's what I do at uh, SA Country. I'm writing the history of SA Country, gone right back to games that were played, believe it or not, Port Piri versus Peterborough in 1907. Basketball was played indoors in most country centres in the early part of the 20th century, the 1900s to the 1940s, in indoor stadiums. There's a plaque on the main street of Cleve that commemorates the fact that there was an indoor stadium uh, for basketball in Cleve in 1926. Wow. And everyone thinks, gee whiz, you know, a basketball came along just lately. So part of my role in determining the history and, and well, recording the history is uh, finding uh, information through archives, old newspapers, the Australian Archives and uh, the National Library. Uh, and I've been astounded what I've found. And I've found that um, in most country towns, basketball was played a long time before we ever had. In South Australia, we had the first basketball match in Australia, played in 1895. This is four years after John Naismith developed the game, or James Naismith, I think, <laughs> developed the game. Um, and he developed the game to provide uh, something to do for his athletes. So the, he was with the YMCA, and the YMCA were big on tunnel ball, they were big on pommel horses, gymnastics, and just displays of physical attributes and things like that. Uh, they wanted more team games, and uh, they wanted something to play inside, so he developed basketball. And basketball was... Uh, developed throughout the world by the YMCA yep. and they would send out notes to their chapters in Australia and the Y started in Australia in 1847, died a little bit, resurrected in the 1880s and the YMCA in Adelaide had an offshoot called OBI, Our Boys Institute and they were calisthenics classes, tunnel ball and you know, yep. pommel horse and skittles and all those things. Uh, they played their first game, very first game in South Australia, 1895, and uh, well reported in the newspapers, and uh, it started from there. So we are just carrying on the legacy of these people, but in all the little country towns, the major country towns, the Y, as in Wyala, uh, uh, had a, a great start uh, to, to build basketball. The Mormons did as well. I remember coming to Wyala, and there was a Mormon influence in the town and the way we played basketball. I was a standard, I came from a culture where you had guards and forwards and you had centres and when I came to Wyala, um, you had uh, shoots and guards and pivots. And I'm thinking, what is a shoot? And Johnny Littimore said to me, my first game, you play shoot. And I thought, wow, no one's ever asked me to shoot before. Um, and uh, it was that Mormon influence. And they went to um, all the little uh, South Australian country towns and they had an influence in developing the game. They provided coaching and um, uh, made up teams and that. Uh, the Y uh, it was the first team I played for in Wyala. It was run by Harry Huard. Uh, and that had a profound influence on the growth of the game. It wasn't the instigator, but they mm -hmm. were... They developed the game. Yeah. yeah. And what would you say to an administrator, a basketball administrator today, in any association, country association? Um, everybody is important. The, the people that pay their way in basketball are more important than the people who watch the game. So it's the young mother of two young fellows who is paying subscriptions, entrance fees, needs to be listened to. 
they need to know that the best is being done for their kids. That uh, when you uh, go out to play, that we have the best facilities for them, the best coaches we can provide. Um, so I think the most important person is the participant. And uh, we as administrators, we, we come second or third. You know, referees are important. Uh, support people are important. Administrators need to take all these things. This has nothing to do with the ego or the self-interest or other things. This is all to do with are you providing the best facility, the best opportunity for these kids? They're paying our way. Let's do the best we can for them. That's been my credo. Um, I've never put any other uh, thing in front of making sure that the participants in the game are well served. John Spooner, thank you very much for a life in basketball. Thank you very much, Trevor.